Meg 2 The Trench is the latest Big Shark movie to hit theaters this weekend and is a sequel to the first movie which was released in 2018. It once again features Jason Statham, who returns as Jonas Taylor, who leads a research team on an exploratory dive into the deepest depths of the ocean. Their voyage spirals into chaos when a malevolent mining operation threatens their mission and forces them into a high stakes battle for survival. Pitted against colossal prehistoric sharks and relentless environmental plunderers, they must outrun, outsmart, and outswim their merciless predators. Now guys, before we give you my review of Meg 2 The Trench, I want to see what you all have to say down in the comment section below. Have you seen the movie yet? Are you excited to see it? What did you think of the first movie? Please comment down below, let me know. I personally was a big fan of the first Meg movie. I thought it was a really silly, really dumb shark movie, and that's a kryptonite of mine. My ultimate guilty pleasure monster movie is shark movies. I am a massive fan of the Sharknado movies. My favorite shark movie of all time, and one of my favorite horror movies of all time is Jaws. And I think other shark movies, while not able to even come close to living up to the reputation of Jaws. I do enjoy Jaws 2. I think Deep Blue Sea is a really enjoyable one. And I actually really love The Shallows. And then there's the ultimate guilty pleasures like Sharknado and Sand Shark and Jersey Shore Shark Attack, you name it. I enjoy these dumb shark movies because they're really silly and sharks are my favorite animal of all time. So obviously being a fan of the first Meg, I was really excited going into Meg 2 The Trench because I knew exactly what I was getting into going into this movie. I'm gonna be honest right off the bat. This isn't a good movie. It's a bad movie, but in the best way possible, if I might say. I went to this movie knowing exactly what to expect. Big, dumb action with Jason Statham doing his Jason Stathamisms, finding a gigantic fucking shark, but this time there's three of them, three megalodons, and even a kraken. That's not a spoiler. That's in the trailer. You do see a megalodon fight a kraken in this. And I had a blast. This is not a good movie by any chance, as I said, by any means. It's a fucking bad movie, but I had a blast with it. And I think if you go into this movie knowing exactly what to expect, you will have a good time with it. Because from the get-go, the movie does admittedly have a bit of a tonal inconsistency. It starts off as a monster movie, then it goes to a sort of spy movie, and then it goes to a deep dive exploration movie, and then it becomes a monster movie again, and then it becomes a fucking action movie again. It feels like three or four different types of movies into one. And it feels tonally inconsistent for that reason and doesn't exactly know what it wants to be, but it does play on that a lot and it does know exactly what it is. So therefore, I'm sort of not mad at the movie for it by any means whatsoever. Jason Statham is a badass from the opening scene as per usual. Well, not the opening scene. The opening scene is that, you know, dinosaur shit. That's, you should kind of expect that from um, the trailer and everything. The first scene that you get in the trailer is the first scene that you get in the fucking movie too. I'm just going to say that right now. Um... VFX, really impressive in this movie, just like the first one, the way that they do the water simulations in the, uh, what is it, VFX engines that they use, as well as making these Megalodon come to life, is truly something I admire, something I find very impressive, and it makes the Megalodons feel truly a part of this location that they are filming in. The Mariana Trench, on the other hand, feels a little bit more bland this time around. I'm someone who's always been fascinated by the depths of the ocean in the Mariana Trench, even though I have a fear of open, o open ocean. Like, I can't stand it. I, I will never go on a fucking cruise for that reason. Probably, I'll probably go one time just, you know, to see what it's like. But at the same time, the Mariana Trench in the first movie sort of had that Aquaman feel about it in regards to big, beautiful, vibrant colors. And that's here to a certain degree. But after a character is told, don't touch anything, it sort of just becomes a very dull gray with a white light or a red light here and there. And it just feels very gray, very dull in an environment this time around from where they are. But I will say the best scene of the entire movie is when they're down the Mariana Trench and they're just walking on the ocean floor like you see in the trailer. That scene right there reminded me of another movie very similar to this in nature for that scene, which is Kristen Stewart's Underwater, a very underrated ocean thriller that's a damn good monster movie at times. I think, um, you know, Underwater is a damn fun horror movie and it uses a lot of pitch black darkness to its advantage. And this movie does a similar thing for the most part, the fear of the unknown in just the black depths, I think is why the Mariana Trench looks a little bit more voidant this time around, as opposed to bright and colorful with exploration and wonder and awe, like in the first one. But here, it's like they've been down there before and now they're in peril. They are walking, they have no choice but to walk on the ocean floor. And it feels like it's meant to have that sense of unease and peril added into it. But in the end, it made it a very bland location and we are stuck down there for a good 30 minutes. If it wasn't for the suspense, the tension and the fear of the dangers down there, that scene would have been a little bit, you know, just, Okay, like, it 
wouldn't have been anything special, unfortunately. But it did keep me on my toes, and it did keep me invested for the most part due to the situation they were in. The deaths in this movie, um... This movie would really, just like the first one, really benefit from an R rating. This is PG-13, once again, and for that, it's quite bloodless. And for certain deaths, that works. There's one scene where you just see Megalodons just scooping people up, and it has a shot that doesn't cut when the Megalodon closes its mouth. It's an inside perspective of the Megalodon's mouth, and you see it close, and then open up again, and just swallowing people, and it makes me realize... Fuck, I'd rather be torn in half by a megalodon than swallowed whole because there's a slow digestive system with no means of getting out whatsoever. And that is a horrifying shot. That shot right there had my jaw drop a little bit. I was like, whoa, what the actual fuck is this? And then there's a certain death that might trigger a few people in this movie, not to bash the filmmakers or anything, uh, given everything that happened with the Ocean Gate incident if, um, about a month or so ago now. Um... A certain death is very reminiscent of what would have happened to them. And, you know, it's a cool death. I don't think I've ever seen a death like that in any movie at all. But it might trigger a few people. But I still thought the death was cool. It's just a really silly shark movie. It's Jason Statham fighting a fucking Megalodon. Multiple Megalodons, as a matter of fact. I'm glad that DJ is back in this movie as well. Like, Paige Kennedy as DJ is one of the funniest people and one of the funniest characters in that first movie. And here, he is also one of the funniest characters. And the arc he has on the first movie to this one and just the antics he goes on had me laughing quite hysterically at times. I'll also say they do explain why Li Bingbing is not in this movie. You know, Su Yin, the love interest to uh, Jonas in the first movie, they do explain why she's not in this. Sort of brushed by it and it's really stupid. And I'm not a fan of when they do this in movies at all, especially sequels. Um, yeah. I will say though that Jason Statham and the actress, I don't, I'm going to try and pronounce her name, but I don't know if I'm going to butcher it. It's Shuya Sophia Kai, I think is her name. The young girl who played Mei Ying in the first one makes a return in this movie. And just like the first movie, their bond, their camaraderie, their banter, their relationship is so much stronger in this movie than it was in the first movie, which is really awesome to see as I loved their banter and their bond in that first movie. And here, it's like a brother-daughter bond almost. And it works really well. I think that they're two of the biggest shining moments or shining things in this movie as a whole. Jason Statham and um, Shuya as Mei Ying and Jonas. They're really good. They are seriously really good together and they play off of each other really well on screen. There is a really silly fucking subplot in this movie in regards to villains who just want to earn a bunch of money, just like in the first movie with Dwight from The Office, and it's easily the least interesting part of the movie, and that's sort of where this movie falls apart. I'm all fine with the whole monster movie stuff and it just being a B-grade movie. Like, this definitely feels like a B-movie. And while it does take too long to get going, it at least was interesting enough with our core cast. These characters that are, you know, just doing this mining operation for money and everything and doing sabotage, um, it didn't work. It just felt very comedic in a way of, oh, that's really stupid. Like, this does not work. This should not be in this fucking movie at all. Um, and it just brought the pacing to a grinding halt a lot of the time. And, um, it wasn't very fun to watch at those moments. But overall, Neg to the Trench is an insanely dumb, very silly, and just stuff your face with popcorn movie. If you go into it expecting a good movie, that's on you. If you go into this movie knowing exactly what it is, a dumb, fun, giant shark movie with a Kraken in it, and Jason Statham literally fighting a fucking Megalodon and doing barrel rolls on jet skis, and, you know, a guy diving into the water, attaching a pipe bomb to a gigantic tentacle, you know exactly what you're getting in for, you'll have a fun time. I had a fun time, I thought it was very enjoyable, I will see it again eventually. I'm not gonna rush out like I did for the first one, because the first one I would say is better, but, you know, this movie's good too, in a way of just turn your brain off, have a fun time. Um, it's not the worst movie I've seen this year, it's nowhere near the best, but it's one of the most enjoyable for myself personally. So with all that said, I'm going to give Meg 2 The Trench a C. Just because I give the movie a C doesn't necessarily mean I hate this movie, by the way, guys. Just because I gave it a low or middle grade doesn't mean that I hate the movie. Or that it's just a bad movie and you can't enjoy it. I can even say you can give a movie an F or you can give a movie like a D or whatever and still have a fun time with it. Sharknado is a good example of that. I still have fun with those. 
Sue me. So guys, what do you think of the Meg 2? Have you seen it yet? If you have, please comment down below. Let me know. Or are you excited? And did you like the first one? As I said, I'm really interested to see what you all have to say. What's your favorite shark movie aside from Jaws? Please comment down below. Let me know. Look out for more movie reactions, movie reviews, and saw content coming very, very soon. My name is Patrick, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.